Welcome to the second video on schema from Training Great Minds. This time we're looking at persistent pain and the way that it's guided and generated by a schema and then how we can use mindfulness to change it. Let's remind ourselves of what a schema is. Our brain is a search engine, so it does a Google on a sensation or a feeling and lots of possible responses are returned. If a schema related to this search has survival value, it will be returned at the top. So we can think of a schema as a mental shortcut. Because all schemas are built upon previous experience, they've all been learned. Obviously, we aren't born with these knowledge structures. As we saw in the first video, they became refined over a lifetime. Those with survival value are difficult to change. And so we have established routines for behaving and coping and thinking and for feeling. So let's watch Dave demonstrate his personal schema for pain. He's at work and he hurts his back again. This happens a lot to Dave. So he goes into his thinking style, one that evolved to keep him safe. Then he feels an emotional response, which is in line with his thinking. For Dave, it's a sinking feeling in his stomach. Then he follows the script behaviourally. He goes home and he lies down. Then more emotions follow and more thoughts follow the emotions. Now, if we could look down at Dave's brain while all of this is going on, maybe with a scanner, as this damage information from his back enters his brain, it gets sent to different regions of the brain that are responsible for processing these thoughts and feelings and actions from Dave's script. All of these regions communicate with each other, laying down a memory trace in the brain. Which is why researchers are now thinking of persistent pain as a maladaptive memory that we can't get rid of. And what I've said is that when it comes to chronic pain, nothing predicts the future like the past. This brings us to a mode of mind called doing mode, a state of autopilot when our minds are either thinking back or thinking forward. We spend most of our lives in this mode of mind. A key point for pain is that our past experiences provide a template for what we expect to happen in the future. So our behavioural routines, our emotional responses and our styles of thinking all occur in doing mode. The problem with this is something called cognitive fusion, whereby our thoughts become fused to our emotions and our behaviours, and our thoughts become distorted because they want to protect the schema. Consequently, we overthink the problem, and we believe what we hear our minds saying. Being mode, on the other hand, is about being in the moment. We tend to look at the world from our thoughts, and we make predictions from them. But being mode encourages us to look at our thoughts. It's easy to get bullied by our thoughts. When we look at them, we can let them go. All of this is important because pain is produced by the brain. The brain decides when we have pain, how much pain we need and how long it should last. But danger comes not just from damage information, but also from our thoughts, our emotions and our actions. So we need to separate thoughts from beliefs, something called cognitive diffusion. To do this, we must actively, purposefully switch from doing to being. A good place to start is the three minute breathing space, whereby we acknowledge, we gather and we expand. So first we acknowledge our thoughts and our emotions and our sensations. Then we move purposefully to our breathing which brings us back to the present moment. And then we expand, which includes areas of discomfort. Without judging the sensations, we breathe into and out from our body. Another way of switching is to just, again, acknowledge your mind is somewhere else. Then bring it to your present experience. Feel your feet. For example, check your posture, be with your body, whatever you're doing, maybe walking. There's a saying that goes, you can't stop the waves, but you can learn to surf. 
Learning to surf is about acceptance, which isn't the same as resigning or giving in to pain. But when we accept something, it becomes less of a problem. But also, don't feel guilty if you can't surf straight away. And don't compare yourself with good surfers. Lots of us are told that we have to learn to live with persistent pain. And it's natural to feel that no more can be done for you. But I like Kabat-Zinn's take on this. Actually, it might just be the beginning for us. I hope you enjoyed this video.